I'm here with Rachel Morgan and we're going to do a, a video on uh, doing a planning for a planning lesson for next week, a lesson that she's going to do on parallel and perpendicular lines. So for this lesson, what are your goals and objectives for it? The goal is that the students will come out being able to write an equation of a line that is parallel to a, no, a line and perpendicular to that same line. So being able to write a parallel and perpendicular equation when given an equation. Okay, and so um, how will you know that they learned to write the parallel and perpendicular line to a given line? Um, Were you going to plan an activity? Oh, um, so the students will be given um, two lines that are parallel and they are going to kind of look at the equation and figure out why they are parallel. Look at the differences and similarities in the equation and figure out what part of the equation makes it parallel and the same with perpendicular. What part of the equation makes it perpendicular and what they notice about that difference between the lines. Are you going to use any tools like any technology tools are they going to use that to do this or they'll what are they going to use? They'll be able to use like their calculators and being able to graph the lines and look at the differences between the two lines and um, they'll also have the equations. And okay. And so how will you know that they're successful on doing that? Um, at the end of the class they will have to explain to a peer um, what they discovered but the differences between the parallel lines and the perpendicular lines and why they why that line is parallel to it and why that line is perpendicular to it and what makes that change. Okay. So uh, you're thinking that they will use math discourse with a peer and you will you be roaming or how, how will you know then that how will you determine that they learn what they need? Um, I will go from group to group and listen to them discussing it. So until I get to their group, they'll just continue with their discovery activity. When I get to their group, they will um, they will start and discuss what it is. So I'm able to sit there and listen and make any corrections if there's any needed. Okay. So what what will the other students be doing? Will they they'll be, be working the dis they'll continue the discovery. Oh, okay. Activity if they haven't finished yet. All right, and then will you ha do any kind of documentation of like for the formative assessment? Because it sounds like a formative assessment where they're using math discourse. Are you going to do any kind of documentation for it, or are you just going to? Is it an informal? You're just going to kind of just informal and just listen. Okay. okay. Have you thought about doing documentation for it? No. Okay. Would you consider doing that? Yeah. Okay. Like a little checklist kind of thing. Uh huh. Like just to see like yeah, or they're using notes math vocabulary. Yeah, and like seeing maybe even who, um, making notes of who might need extra support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what might be some of the strategies you've considered? I mean, you talked a little bit about the discovery. Um, what will that look like? Is that going to be like, are they going to have a handout? Are they going to have task cards? Are they going to have a smart notebook? Like, what, what so specific strategies will you think you use? What what I was thinking is that there will be a group and they will have um, a sheet that will have a set of parallel lines and a set of perpendicular lines and they will as a group come up with what's making them parallel and what's making them perpendicular so it's more trying to be more student-centered instead of me telling them what the difference is with the parallel and the perpendicular. Yeah, having them come up with it? Yes. I feel like they retain it more if they come up with it. All right. Have you have you uh, actually observed that happening mm -hmm. over the year? Because at the beginning of the year, you did a lot of talking and telling, and and then you switched. I've, the I've tried to in yeah, your first year. switch out of it. Yes. Yeah. And you see a difference. Mm -hmm. I feel like they uh, really they understand it, and I noticed like there's some kids when I explain it, yeah, they get it the first time, but there's some kids that get it better when their peers explain it to them. Mm -hmm. So, do you see a difference in their data when you do it that way? Have you observed any data changes? Not really, no. No, I their test scores really haven't. At it. Their test scores haven't went up. Maybe that's something that you could do, like after this lesson, even like see compare that data to maybe a data at the beginning of the year when, when we first went over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Um, so what is most important for you to pay attention in yourself during this lesson? Um, to make sure I allow the kids the full reign to do it, do the project instead of me, you know, um, interjecting myself in whenever they're struggling and allowing them to struggle and allowing their group to help them get through it. So in the past, like if they were to struggle, what, what would be your like, tendency? At first, I was really bad about like just chiming in like and telling them what it is instead of maybe, at first I would tell them and then I've gotten to where I find questions that kind of prompt them to the right answer but don't give them the answer. And so with this one, I actually want because we've done parallel and perpendicular lines before, I want them as a group to figure it out without me having to say anything about it. So making them more think more critically instead of me just interjecting and telling them what it is. So it sounds like you're going to use some guided questions to coax them along when you, when you sense some frustration. Mm -hmm. And then um, as you reflect on the conversation, so we talked about your goals and objectives, um, how you know you'll su su succeed in meeting your goals and objectives. Um, you decided on some specific strategies, and then we just talked about what you need to pay attention to yourself. So in that conversation, how has it supported your learning or lesson planning? Um, I've been able to kind of make my decision what I'm gonna do like finite like it's just you know discussing them helps me realize that the way that I'm going is the best you know probably the best for the students to make them actually think themselves and um, yeah so you have a strong belief that um, by talking through it it's going to make it more student-centered it makes more you more sense. conscientious yeah. of making it student-centered. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else that um, you can think of that helps support your learning by going through this coaching cycle or this coaching sequence? Um, no. Maybe more detailed? Do you think of yeah. details well, yeah. a little bit more? I think as I'm talking mm -hmm. to you, well, it makes me think about details more. Do you think it think, makes you think about the details a little bit more? Mm -hmm. um, Instead of it just be like the idea in my head, it actually like it makes it, and it gives me other things to think about too, you know, like. So. Things you didn't think of well before. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say before we end the exciting video no of not planning at all. for parallel and perpendicular lines no, <laughs> okay. not at all all right the end thank you <laughs>